This video will be the first of three videos working through Chapter 8 of Gapinski's Healthcare Finance. Uh, this should apply to editions 5 and 6 and maybe some of the earlier editions as well. So Chapter 8 focuses on financial planning and budgeting. And the importance here of, of both planning and budgeting is that you know, every organization has to do this. It's critical to uh, preparing for the future and to making sure that you align your mission and vision uh, with the, um, uh, the actual uh, uh, performance of the organization. And so finance is, as I like to say to my students, the blood of the organization. You can't function without, without money, without cash flow coming in. Uh, and, you know, as, as is commonly said, you know, no money, no mission. So the planning process begins with the strategic plan. And this is kind of a broad brush approach set by the board of the organization. So the most senior level of the organization set by the board who represent the owners. If this is a not-for-profit, right, the board represents the community and represents the interests of the stakeholders in the community. Uh, and so the board sets the goals of the organization. Uh, the board employs, as, as we've talked about uh, in other places, employs the CEO and senior management. Um, but it's the board that ideally sets the strategic plan uh, for the future of the organization. And that, and that strategic plan focuses in on the values, the mission, and the vision, right? The very broad perspective of the organization and what it, what it, what it is trying to do, why it exists, what it's trying to do, and where it's trying to go. The operating budget, excuse me, operating plan, um, often a five-year plan, is, is different from the strategic plan in the sense that it starts to try to take the strategic plan and operationalize it in the form of goals and metrics, and it can actually be measured. Right? So, the, so the board and senior, you know, senior management would then present to the board uh, how they're doing on their, on their goals and objectives as operationalized in the operating plan. And then um, the operating plan provides kind of those, that guidance that, you know, and goals that the management is trying to execute toward, and it provides kind of the um, structure for subordinate leaders within the organization to try to fall in and uh, uh, fall in behind and, and support. So uh, an operating plan, so this is not a class on, on strategic planning or, op or planning. Uh, really, it's, it's more, we're going to go down into the weeds um, of budgeting, but to get a sense of where this kind of fits, where does finance fit into this? Well, so you're going to have an operating plan. It's going to reflect a bunch of different things about the organization. So you're going to take from the strategic plan, uh, you know, your mission, vision, values, uh, your broad organizational goals, and then all these things are going to be uh, going to be expressed down um, uh, into targets and metrics. And a portion of the operating plan includes financing and how financing is going to support uh, the larger organization. So within the um, the section on you know financial planning, what is it we're going to be looking at? So there's a couple of you know, common sections that you would see uh, in the finance portion of an operating plan. So the first is an analysis of the financial condition of the organization, um, as well as kind of looking at these are, so this is the macro factors. So it's going to look at internally, you know, how is the organization doing? So we're going to look at the financial statements that we talked about in chapters three and four, you know, trying to get that big picture. Uh, how are we doing? And answering that question, it's also it also should include um, an analysis of the of the economic conditions, so the kind of macro picture of what's going on around the organization, right? So the organization is embedded in a community. It's embedded in a larger, you know, a, lo a local community, a larger, you know, state level community. So how are the financial conditions? Uh, how is unemployment in, in this particular area? So, for example, here on the seacoast of New Hampshire, we typically have a lower unemployment rate than in the North Country. Uh, in the more rural areas of the state tend to have a higher level of unemployment. It's harder to attract talent 
uh, or it's more competitive. It's not harder to attract talent, but it's, it's more competitive to attract talent um, in the seacoast, harder probably to attract talent uh, in the rural areas, to convince talent to move to the rural areas. We have a lot of talent in the seacoast, harder to compete for it because there are lots of people competing for it, right? Or lots of organizations. So you want to have integrated here, you know, in this financial condition is, is an awareness of the larger, you know, um, what's going on in the larger economy. And then you want to drill into the, um, you know, into the organization. We want to look at, okay, how is the organization doing? We'll be doing ratio analysis, things like that is appropriate here. Uh, capital budget, it's the capital budget you're looking at, you know, how much do we want to spend on on that, those PPE lines, the property, plant, and equipment? What do we need to be, you know, these are the big financial investments that we need to be looking at down the line. Like, you know, um, capital budget's going to cover, and it depends on the organization, but it's going to cover things that are, are high dollar amount that, you know, you're, you're going to most likely be deciding at the board level. We want to make an investment um, to build a new clinic in this, you know, other part of our community or maybe extend our influence by, you know, stepping out of our of our immediate local community and maybe trying to push into a you know into a, a community that's you know maybe within a reasonable range of our of our organization you know and try to compete with other organizations well how much is that going to cost you know building a building is expensive putting equipment in is expensive so you know we'll look at a capital budget for that um we're going to make forecasts about our financial statements. And and the only way you can do that, of course, is to have an accurate uh, financial condition analysis, right? Looking at the bigger trends in in, uh, what's happening in uh, in healthcare um, uh, more broadly, you know, what are our expectations about reimbursement and and things like that. Um, And then how much does the organization, how much does the organization have to go out to the community uh, to request funding as opposed to how much does the organization have uh, available to it from retained earnings, money that it has earned in the past and has saved uh, in the form of, of long-term investments. So the question is, you know, okay, we're going to build a new building. It's going to take, it's going to cost, you know, $30 million. That's probably not something we're going to want to fund internally. That's something we may want to issue you know, issue bonds to fund. And so that would be an example of external fund financing. Second section is working capital. So this is, you know, much more in the weeds. You know, day-to-day uh, working capital is kind of our day-to-day m- management of our, of our cash and our, our, our um, money coming in and money coming out, right? So it's, it's managing the, the revenues that we're earning as well as managing our expenses uh, and keeping a good balance there. Uh, we have policies around, you know, how many days uh, cash on hand do we want to have? How much cash do we want to carry just in general? Um, uh, we're going to develop a cash budget. Um, uh, we're going to look at, you know, how much of our cash should be, uh, you know, in, in, in um, immediately available as opposed to moving it to, uh, to uh, short-term securities so that we can earn some interest because when, you know, when you have cash in, in corporate checking account, you're not going to be earning interest on it. So if you can move it to, uh, uh, to T-bills or something, you know, some sort of uh, short-term, very short-term investment that's easily liquidated, but, you know, it's not immediately cash. Because that's the kind of questions we're dealing with here. Inventory management, um, you know, that's changed a lot in the last couple of decades. I remember when I first started uh, in the early 90s, you know, we had big warehouses uh, where we kept, you know, weeks of, of supply. And now most organizations have a few days of supply and they don't have big warehouses anymore. Right? We, we work on a just-in-time management system. But managing that inventory, right, inventory is expensive. Most, you know, a, a, a typical hospital might have a couple of million dollars in inventory. And they, how, how often do you turn that inventory, right? Meaning how many, how many times a year do you turn over that? You know, your chances are you're spending, you might have a couple of million dollars in inventory on hand, uh, but you might spend a hundred million dollars in inventory, uh, excuse me, in supply over the course of a year. So you might be turning your inventory 50 or 60 times a year, right? So, so the less inventory you can keep on hand, the less cash is tied up in your inventory. So you want to manage that very carefully. 
revenue cycle is a huge um, is a huge part of of hospital operations or any healthcare organization, not just hospitals, right? And because we are not, right, we're on an accrual basis, we're not on a cash basis. So almost, you know, the vast majority of our revenues come from third party payers. So when a patient comes in, they might give us, you know, some modest copay, but the vast majority of the revenue that we're going to collect from that visit, from that procedure, from that, you know, uh, admission is going to come later on from a third party payer and managing those relationships carefully and making sure that uh, we are uh, uh, minimizing the time that we have to wait to get our revenues in uh, is critical to the successful functioning of a, of a uh, healthcare organization. And then, you know, short-term financing, we don't always have the right amount of cash at the right time. Uh, you know, we may have a highly successful uh, organization with very good revenue, but again, because we're running on on uh, a accrual basis, not a cash basis, sometimes we don't have as much cash on hand as we want. So, do we need to be um, uh, working with our banks on some sort of line of credit so that we can, you know, maintain the right amount of cash on hand at all times? Then the third part of of the financial plan is budgeting, and this is what we're going to spend most of this chapter talking about, and and that is. Um, budgeting and control. So we're going to develop a statistics budget, talk about what each of these means, but but quickly, statistics budget is kind of um, the relevant numbers that we're going to be building our budget around. So things like how many visits do we expect in each of our clinics? How many admissions do we expect for each of our wards? How many procedures are we going to do um, in our hospital? Uh, how many lab tests, how many scans, how many of each of those things, right? So the statistics budget is really just measuring the numbers in our organization. From the statistics budget, we're going to develop both a revenue budget and an expense budget. Uh, ultimately, we, of course, want to be moving toward uh, a capitated arrangement, right, where, where our, we disconnect uh, our revenues from our statistics in the sense of, of you know, our, our volumes, um, but the reality is most community hospitals and even most academic medical centers at this point are still tightly tied to a fee-for-service arrangement. Um, so the revenue and expense budgets are, are both tightly tied to the statistics budget. They're driven, right? like we've talked about in prior chapters, they, the, the drivers for uh, revenue and expense are, in fact, you know, the services that we render, the number of visits, the number of scans, and it drives both of those. From there, we develop an operating budget, um, and then we need to develop control procedures to make sure that money is going where it's supposed to be going, it's not being lost, it's not being, um, uh, uh, we want to track to make sure our organizations are executing uh, their budgets the way we plan for them to do, and we want to reward managers who do a good job of managing their expenses uh, and and drill into and 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 pay attention to areas of the organization where our expenses are not falling in line with our, our expectations. So, you know, what are the keys to an effective planning process? Well, it's it's it is not just finance, right? Finance can't do this effectively on its own. You might have some very smart people in your finance shop but they need input from uh, the operating side of the, of the organization. So a good finance team is going to be working hand in hand with uh, the clinical side to develop, particularly the statistics budget, to develop accurate um, revenue and expense expectations. Um, right? So this is not something they can do uh, in a vacuum. And it really requires having a good handle on what's going on uh, in the larger macro environment in terms of reimbursement, in terms of, um, uh, uh, you know, the needs of the population that we're serving, how the population is changing, uh, what kind of payers are coming and going out of our market, and so forth. So all those things have to be thought about as you develop that financial plan. So it's a complex process, and it really is not something that can just be done, like finance can't just do this on its own. It really needs to be done as a collaborative process. So getting into the budgets, uh, 
few things about budget. So what is a budget? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a plan, right? It is a plan and it's expressed in dollar terms. So that's, you know, the, the thing I always talk about accounting is really it is, it is a way of communicating, right? It is, it, it is a stylized way of, of communicating. Um, but it is essentially an, a, a, a plan expressed in, you know, using uh, numbers, right? Using dollars uh, that say, you know, that, that direct how the organization is going to use its resources over some period of time, you know, so you could have a, uh, typically it's an annual budget, but it's tracked on a monthly, on a monthly basis. Um, so we're looking, we're going to look at, you know, how execution goes over time, but the budget drives, you know, tells managers, these are the resources you're going to have available to you. And this is how we expect you to use them. Um, so they can be developed at a number of different levels and they typically are developed at a number of different levels and there's different ways to do it. So you can kind of, you know, look at the whole organization in aggregate. Uh, you can do it, you know, by department. So you could have say, you know, the department of cardiology, you can have a service line that crosses multiple departments. And so you can have a, a budget developed for a service line. Um, you know, you could have a budget for a particular contract. So for example, you know, you have, um, uh, we used to, develop a budget for our uh, short-term nursing contract. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, arrangements that we had uh, with a, uh, uh, a provider of, of uh, 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 per diem nursing. Uh, so we'd have a, a budget for that. So you have lines like, so you have specific lines for big, particularly big expenses like that. Um, so to be effective, uh, you know, you really have to think of this not as as something that belongs to the finance staff, but really it's a it's a thing for communicating from senior leadership to the subordinate managers. The finance shop is really just a um, you know is a supporting cast member here. The real you know the, the the important people here are you know the senior managers communicating to the to the um, subordinate managers about what they expect to have happen. So the budget is a way of linking, right, the strategic vision um, to the operating operating uh, uh, plan uh, to then resource and provide the resources to the to the subordinate managers who are actually executing uh, the operating plan. And so you know the budget tells managers this is our plan. You know, this is what we expect you to execute. We expect you to do this many visits, this many admissions, this many um, scans or, you know, or tests or whatever, um, right? And then, it, and then it provides us a, a means of control. And we'll get into more about how, you know, we look at variance analysis here shortly. So a little more about the statistics budget, right? The statistics budget is that, you know, is, is based on the forecast that we talked about uh, as part of the financial plan. So we're looking at volume, right? Um, particularly, so, you know, depending on what kind of organization you are, um, is it, you know, uh, uh, patient days? Is it, um, is it uh, you know, tests done? Is it uh, visits? Is it procedures? All those things we have to, we have to lay out you know, our expectations about what those things are going to be. And they, and they can't, they have to be based in some sort of reality, right? They have to be based in, they, they shouldn't be, you know, oh, we'd really like to do this. It has to be a realistic expectation with an understanding of uh, our, our business environment you know, the, that, you know, and, and the patients that we're serving. So it, it bases it on um, the services that are provided and then the amount of, you know, of resources that are expected to um, be needed to provide those services. And this is kind of all happening separate from the dollar figures that are going to be associated with it. Um, so let's see. So revenue budget starts to take the data from the volume, right? Taking from the statistics budget. And we start to look at the revenue that we expect to generate based on realistic expectations of how much, how many services we're going to provide. And you're going to want, you know, you're going to want to break this out uh, by your different payers because you know, your commercial payers are going to pay more 
than your government payers, right? So if you've got, you know, a contract with Cigna or Anthem or, you know, the private payers, those are your, that's where you're going to make, you know, most of your, uh, 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 cover most of your expenses by uh, collecting from those payers. And then you're going to, you know, make do with the payments that you get from uh, the government payers, Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, VA, that are all, you know, relatively, you know, relative to the commercial payers don't pay as well. So you have to, you know, as you make these projections, you have to come up with a realistic uh, mix of payers and understand uh, how, how the mix of payers influences the amount of revenue that you're going to collect. So the end result, you know, again, is kind of looking at, you can look at a number of different the revenue forecasts in a number of different ways. Um, and you can break it down, you know, you're going to, you're going to want to make a, at some point, you're going to want to make an aggregate projection for the whole organization. But, you know, making projections, you know, making budgets at the whole organization level is less useful for purposes of control than making them at some, some uh, subordinate level where you can, you know, where managers actually are close enough to operations to influence uh, the operations and how things come out. So you're going to want to do it at the department and service level. Uh, you may even want to generate, um, you know, something at a, you know, you know, at a DRG level, but mostly that you're going to want to do in, you know, at, uh, by way of building up toward a department or service level budget, right? You're not going to, you know, you might say, well, we think for this particular kind of patient, you know, we might generate this much revenue, but that's only useful in terms of building a, a, a revenue expectation for a particular kind of service and then ultimately a department. And then also by payer, like we, I talked about. Um, the expense budget, you know, the flip side of, of the revenue budget, it's the same kind of thing. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, uh, a patient's payer does not change the amount of expense it takes to take care of that patient, right? So if you have, if you're doing a procedure on a patient with commercial insurance and you're doing a procedure on a patient with Medicaid, they're both going to cost the same, you know, most like assuming, you know, all other things equal same, you know, the, the patient is getting the same procedure. The patient has the same um, health status. They're going to cost the same, but the reimbursement's going to be, you know, widely different. So the recognition here with the expense budget is actually often a little simpler than the revenue budget because, you know, everybody costs the same, everybody gets reimbursed differently. Um, but expenses, you know, need to be broken out into into fixed and variable components. So we'll, uh, we've talked about that in prior chapters, and we'll again talk about it here some more. Um, and expenses can be, you know, broken out in a variety of different ways. So uh, for a large organization, you're going to have an operating budget that, you know, looks at overall uh, profitability. So we're kind of aggregating up, um, you know, with a smaller, if you're a small enough organization, you may not bother breaking out, you know, into the level of granularity. But if you're a hospital, you're going to want to have, you know, budgets across the board. If you're a single uh, you know, uh, clinic, um, you may not, you know, might, may not break it out further. Um, but if you're a hospital or you're a multi-specialty practice, of course, you're going to have different budgets because your, your different sections are generating revenue and expenses in different ways. And, and in order to communicate with those managers and make sure that those managers are doing their job well and managing effectively, you really do need to have separate budgets. So um, organizations use typically annual budgets. Uh, and so you're going to be building a budget uh, for the coming year at the st typically simultaneously with uh, uh, building a, bu with closing out a budget for the prior year. So when I was a, a chief financial officer, comptroller for the army, very often I would be working with um, my managers, with the department chiefs, uh, making projections about the coming year while my chief of budget was working on the accounting side to close out the year. Um, and so that's how we kind of tended to split uh, our labor. Um, and so it's kind of this very busy period. The end of the fiscal year is tends to be a very busy period because you're simultaneously trying to 
finalize your projections for the coming year as well as close out the old year. Uh, uh, you know, uh, mostly you're reporting budgets on, I'd say, a monthly basis to ensure, you know, timely feedback. Those budgets, the monthly reports tend to not to have the level of granularity and level of refinement as, say, a quarterly budget does, you know, a quarterly budget review does. But certainly you're looking at the pattern of spending uh, that's happening uh, in the organization, you know, the, the level of execution. So, for example, um, your supply spend, you would expect to have fairly even throughout the course of the year. Uh, but, uh, and so if you're, if you have a department that after the third month has spent 50% of its supply budget, you know, but it's only a quarter of the way through the year, that's an indication that there's a problem. Um, and likewise, if they aren't, haven't spent, you know, most of their, you know, uh, most of their budget by the time you get to the 11th month, then there's also a problem there. Um, and so money needs to be reallocated out. So I, uh, so we definitely, you know, your, your finance people will definitely be looking at this on a, you know, the, uh, your budget on a monthly basis, you may not be getting, um, you may not be reviewing it. Uh, in some sort of in-depth way on a monthly basis, uh, but you're certainly going to—it's certainly going to be looked at. And then out-year budgets refer to years, you know, past the coming year. Um, so, like you've got the coming year, and then you'll also be kind of looking and projecting, you know, for the year after that and the year after that. Uh, you know, in the army, we were typically looking at you know a five-year cycle. Okay, so we'll pause here, come back, and pick up the second part.